Earlier, you saw a beautiful inspirational video about how machine learning and Android were used to create an app to detect crop diseases. So for DevFest, I wanted to get together a few of my friends from Google and beyond to show you how you could get started in building something just like that from scratch in a few minutes. We'll build an Android app and a web app. So to get started with Android, let's see what Chet can teach us. I want to create an app that's able to recognize information about plants. It's going to need camera functionality as well as machine learning inference. Let's see what that looks like in code. The app is written in Kotlin and uses Camera X to take the pictures, an ML kit for on-device machine learning analysis. The core functionality is in Take Photo, where we take a picture, analyze it, and display the results. First, we call Take Picture on a Camera X image capture object that was created earlier. One of the parameters is a callback object, which has this on capture success function. We get the received image into the format we need for MLKit, then we create an image labeler object and process the image. When this succeeds, we receive a collection of image labels, which we turn into text strings and display a toast with the results. Let's see what the demo looks like. So we'll take a picture and it says, I see an insect and a plant. So that was pretty easy, rigging up camera X and ML kit to detect arbitrary objects in the camera view. But the results were pretty generic because the data set didn't have enough information about our domain. So let's dig a little deeper. Okay, let's go deeper. Now we need a model for something very specific, detecting diseases in bean plants instead of cassava. Let's explore how to build it. On this guide, we'll use some of the great TensorFlow tooling available. Let's start with Colab. You can understand Colab as a cloud-hosted development tool. We will do all our coding on it, and you will not need to install anything on your machine. Let's start with a new notebook. Let's just turn the Python to beans. We will need to install some packages that we are going to use later. These packages are not installed on your machine. They are on a cloud machine that was created for your Colab. Nice, it finished installed the packages. Let's download the data and do some visualization to understand how our data is separated. Perfect. We download the data. Let's take a look on some of the images so we can have a better understanding of what we are doing here. Here they are. These are some of the images that will be used for training our model later. Now we have the data. We need to create a model. We are not going to create one from scratch we are going to use a technique called transfer learning. TensorFlow Hub is a repository for TensorFlow models. You can find all kinds of models here. Let's start with this one. Let's go back to our Colab. Let's define a model handle. Nice. Now we have the data and the base model. How can we do transfer learning? To do that, we are going to use one of the tooling that I mentioned before called Model Maker. Model Maker make your life way easier when you need to do transfer learning. Let's create the spec for our base model. Let's create our train variables here using the data set beans that we've just seen. And now we are going to put everything together with Model Maker by defining a model with the training data and the spec that we got from TensorFlow Hub. This will take a couple of minutes. It finished training, and as you can see here, our accuracy is at 87%. Of course, let's evaluate the model with some data it didn't see yet and see how good it is. Nice, 95%. The TensorFlow Lite model Gus just created contains all the metadata Android Studio needs to recognize it and automatically build classes for it. To get started, you can update your build.gradle file to include the following TensorFlow Lite dependencies. Then, you'll want to import your generated TF Lite file into the ML folder of your project. Let's check out the details of our imported model. From here, we can see an example of how to use the model in our app. Let's move over to the main activity class to take advantage of it. Inside of our image capture callback here on line number 78, we create an instance of our model. Next, we use it to process the captured image here on line number 84. And finally, here on lines 92 through 98, we display the results of consuming the output inside of a toast message. Let's run our app. Now, 
instead of telling us it's looking at a leaf or a plant, it can actually tell us if it's looking at a bean leaf and give a diagnosis. Sweet. So this concept works, but it's very much a raw demo. What if we want to make this a more successful app? Well, we'd probably need to add services like authentication so our users can sign in, analytics and A-B testing so we can find out how our users are really interacting with our app, some crash reporting or performance monitoring, and an easy way to save our users' data to the cloud. Luckily, that's where Firebase comes in. Now, the new and improved Firebase plugin in Android Studio makes this simple. I'll start by adding some analytics so I can find out exactly how our users are interacting with our app. And the plugin does most of the work to get the library integrated into my project. Now that I've done that, well, we can uh, get an instance of the library up here. And then we can log what kind of results we're getting from MLKit. And then once we've done that, there's a lot of ways to get at this data. It'll start showing up here in the Firebase dashboard, but I find one really fun way of viewing this data is to use StreamView, which kind of gives you a real timey sample of what kinds of analytics results we're seeing. Looks like I've already recorded several of these select content events, and I can dig into these event properties and see what kinds of results our users are getting, and I could start using that information to maybe refine my MLKit model or A-B test different alternatives. Firebase helps you build better apps, and analytics is just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. Maybe we could let our users upload their own pictures and store them in the cloud using cloud storage for Firebase. There's so many possibilities. This is a sample app, but if we were to productize this, it's important to keep in mind how our AI design decisions impact our users. For instance, we need to consider if and or how it makes sense to display confidence intervals to help your users interpret the ML model output. Or say, how you design the onboarding experience sets user expectations for the capabilities and limitations of your ML-based app, which is vital to app adoption and engagement. For more guidance on AI design decisions, check out the People Plus AI Guidebook at pair.withgoogle.com guidebook. This use case focuses on plant diseases, but for other use cases where our ML-based predictions intersect with people or communities, we absolutely need to think about responsible AI themes like privacy and fairness, which you can learn more about at tensorflow.org slash resources slash responsible dash AI. And don't forget about the web. I've built a PWA that can be installed across all your users' platforms. It combines the web camera with TensorFlow.js and by integrating machine learning, we can make an amazing experience that runs across all browsers. Now let's take a look. We have our standard project layout with a HTML file, a manifest, and a service worker to make it a PWA. We have some styles to make it look good, and our data folder that contains our TensorFlow configuration and trained model that we're gonna use in the app. Now to the heart of the project, let's go back to the HTML file and see what's happening. We're also loading a webcam object this is just a class that wraps some boilerplate logic to make it easier to pass camera data from Get User Media to TensorFlow. And now let's dive into our app logic in index.js. So I'm just going to use Chrome and the debugger here. And this is only so you can kind of see how easy it is to integrate machine learning into your application. So let's get started by clicking the classify button, get the machine learning gears into action, and immediately we break into the TensorFlow tidy function. This is just there to help you kind of clean up any of the memory that TensorFlow uses whilst it makes its prediction. We get our image from the web camera, and then we pass our image back into the, uh, into the machine learning algorithm to make it a prediction. Then once we've got a prediction, we access the data, and then we can use that data to update the user interface kind of based on any application logic that we want. And that's pretty much it. Great, so now you have the platform for building a real app with the tooling from Android Studio, the APIs from CameraX, Jetpack, MLKit, Colab, TensorFlow, Firebase, Chrome, and Google Cloud, you have a lot of things that just work better together. This isn't a finished project by any means, just a proof of concept for how a minimum viable product with a roadmap to completion can be put together using Google's developer tools and APIs. You might also want to open source this project too, so developers can suggest improvements, optimizations, or, and even additional features by filing an issue or sending a pull request. It's a great way to get your hard work in front of even more people. We'd love to help you with this, and you can learn more about the process at opensource.guide slash starting a project. Indeed, we've already open sourced the bean disease sample we discussed in this video, so you can have a great place to start. 
Thanks, Pooja. And as you mentioned, open sourcing a project is a great way to make it grow and inspire people to adopt and extend it. If you want to learn more about what you've seen in this video, please visit us at developers.google.com.